This video will walk you through the tracking and playback workflow of the Neve console in Studio 2. If you need to skip forward to a specific part of this video, there are time codes down in the description box for the different sections. The reason many students struggle the first time they use a studio is because they're expecting the workflow to be the same as the Soundcraft in Studio 3 and for the signal to travel right down the channel strip. But this console is essentially a big summing amp. So everything that is in the rack above the Neve has no direct connection to the console and needs to be patched into the tape in. The tape in is where all the signal comes into the console, whether that's from Pro Tools or anything in the outboard racks. There are also aux sends, but these aren't really necessary for the setup we have here. The faders on the Neve can be used with Swift Mix, which when turned on acts as a controller and maps with the faders in Pro Tools. You can mix down multiple channels into the buses here, and these can also be patched to different components of gear and patched into Pro Tools. The monitor section is pretty straightforward. There's a stereo fader, a monitor selection, and the monitor gain. The tape in is where you should patch your inputs to, whether that's before or after Pro Tools, in order to listen to them through the monitors. Make sure that the tape button is engaged, and you can adjust the gain if necessary. You need to designate a destination for your channels. That can be the stereo bus or any of the eight buses with multiple destinations allowed. The middle section consists of your bus faders and monitoring. When using the buses, make sure you have designated which stereo channel to send it to and to set the panning. These can also be soloed or muted. You can choose between any of the three monitoring options in the studio. A is for the M and Ks, B for the NS10s, and C is for the headphone amp. You can listen to your mix in mono as well as stereo. The patch bay is the most important thing when working in this studio, as the only normaling that is really helpful is from some of the preamps into Pro Tools and then the Pro Tools outputs into the tape in of the Neve. The easiest workflow in here is to patch your preamp directly into the Pro Tools interface and then listen to your master fader from Pro Tools via channel 1 and 2. This setup makes it very simple to use the outboard gear as you don't need to use the auxes or the buses to route your signal, you just simply patch it to where you want it to go. If you wanted to route into Pro Tools after the console, it's as simple as changing where Pro Tools is in the chain. Instead, you would patch from your preamp to the tape in, or the preamp to an EQ or compressor then to the tape in, and then you would patch the outputs of the Neve either the stereo out or the individual channels into Pro Tools. The stereo out of the Neve is actually normaled into Pro Tools 41 and 42. If you wanted to send a bus to a compressor or EQ, those are easy to patch as well. Just make sure to engage the group insert button to use this. And the bus outs of the Neve are also normaled into Pro Tools. In Pro Tools, you can choose the preamp input that you're using as most of them are normaled into Pro Tools. Or if you're recording from the Neve or other outboard gear, you can choose the correct inputs corresponding to your signal path. To listen back from Pro Tools, the simplest way is to listen to a stereo mix of your session by choosing Pro Tools Out 1 and 2 for your output. Make sure that the output is routed to the physical output by checking the mapping in the output and bus tabs in the I.O. settings, and adjust your tape in settings and monitor routing on the Neve to hear your mix.